I mentioned earlier how I had some habits that turned out to be good things to do if you have Parkinson's. Um, I used to walk and run and uh, lead fairly energetic kind of sporty life and those habits uh, have stayed with me uh, also going upstairs up and downstairs two at a time so you know habits of being energetic which are very good I'm told are very good to to practice if you have Parkinson's um, I belong to various organizations and groups of friends who were interested in, well, one friend, group of friends were very interested in having a beer together. No harm in that one. I belong to a book club. We meet once a week and, oh, sorry, once a month and talk about some book we've chosen to read. I belong to a choir which um, consumes about 80, eight zero evenings of every year. I'm out singing with that choir. And it turns out that singing is one of the good things for Parkinson's people to do uh, as a practice against losing the voice. Voice can get rather weak, I understand, but that hasn't happened to me yet, fortunately. So I do that. I read a lot of books for pleasure. I actually write poetry and have produced a couple of books of, of poetry. So that's a lot of fun. It takes me far away from thinking about illness. I'm trying to find the right adverb to stick in a sentence or decide whether the comma has to be kept or deleted. And it's a far cry from worrying about your health. So I think that's very useful. Now, I was already doing those things before I took the uh, Living Well with Parkinson's course, but it made me realize just how important the physical activities were. And so I started tracking them all in a spreadsheet. I'd show how many minutes I spent bending and stretching, how many minutes um, doing Tai Chi. I, I signed up for Tai Chi classes. I've been going to a personal trainer in a gym, I record that, and half an hour in the gym is worth an hour and a half of walking in terms of effort. So I just like doing that kind of thing. I have all these numbers accumulating and I can feel guilty if the numbers are dropping and I can feel jubilant if they're rising. So the, the course put me onto that. Also, reading more. Um, I've got a couple of books about Parkinson's that I haven't actually finished, but I've been dipping into them. Uh, joining the Ontario Parkinson's Association and I wanted to go to their local support group but it hasn't been meeting recently because coincidentally they meet in a church and the church has been undergoing alterations and they haven't found a place to meet so I haven't actually met those people yet but I'm looking forward to that and I've been getting uh, email newsletters from what is it somewhere in Portland or somewhere in the, on the west coast that was recommended to me by a parkie, a parkie, as we call them, as we call ourselves, and uh, the Ontario Parkinson's Association newsletter. And by the way, they give you wonderful information when you sign up. I just got in touch with them by a phone number that I found on a website, and they sent me a package of information, brochure, little booklets about exercises and things. It was wonderful to have all that stuff, and I don't feel like a blind man groping out into a mysterious future. There are all these bright lights of advice and, and big-hearted volunteers and helpers and professionals. I shouldn't just say volunteers, but you know, it, it, can make, it can warm your heart to find that there is all this stuff waiting out there to help you if you make yourself known to them.